Okay, so every single creation deserves my love. Do you agree? Yes. It's a good lesson. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And we were having a discussion actually with Peter and Claire last night about um, some of the things seem quite obvious, you know, we care for our environment, we don't litter, and um, what else? Perhaps, well, if we care about animals, which is another of God's creations, we don't harm them, we don't eat them, that kind of thing. And the thing that we were talking about, we were talking about um, a lot of Western society, we are talking about the contrast between um, so we're, we're all here and who recycles and like we recycle our cardboard and our glass and and we don't litter and we don't do all of these things. But there's a lot of other subtle ways in which we do harm to God's creations. Um, and a lot of and the way our government systems work and our trade systems work are uh, that we actually uh, import a lot of our goods. So, um, a lot of the environmental damage that is caused in the, in the making of those goods is actually offshore. So we create this sort of, Australia's a fairly pristine environment, it's not a lot of, I mean we've got a lot of pollution, but if you go to, a, for example, a developing country, you see a stark contrast. Um, and we were talking about um, the issue of population, because a lot of people say that, well there's all these people in India, and you know, that's a huge, um, huge using up of resources on our planet. And actually, um, the contrast between what you and I use in a day, in terms of a fridge and a car, and uh, what else we use, all of the appliances in our house, the air conditioner, we go on an overseas holiday, it's a really cheap flight to Bali, so we go there. You know, all of these things that actually have an effect on, on the world around us. Whereas someone in India, walks to work, they don't eat meat because they don't, they can't afford it, they don't have um, overseas holidays, they all live in a very small area so they don't actually use up a lot of resources in, in the way that they live. So actually um, somebody's uh, tax or imprint, carbon imprint or toll on the, on the world in an, another country that we might see as uh, more taxing, like China, might, although China's a bad example because there's a lot of cars, but <laughs> yeah, we, we often, I, I see in Australia a bit that we get quite high and mighty about our recycling, when actually there's a lot of other ethical choices that we could be making about the effects that we have on our environment. So what does everyone feel about what Mary said, because I've got no idea. <laughs> no, we talked about this before, so how do you feel about that? Can you see how that affects your life? Mary said she made a bit of a mess of it, did she? No. <laughs> I, I think the point I was trying to make was that if we're conscious with it, um, about this lesson in love, it's actually quite a deep lesson. Mm -hmm. um, and it, um, yeah. And, and we do have a lot of power in the choices that we make. And the, the truth is that the things we see that we're distressed about in many countries overseas, we are actually creating. So how many of you are distressed about the Amazon rainforest being destroyed? How many of you feel distressed about that? Like, fair majority. When you hear about it happening at a football field a minute, I think it is around about. That's a, that's a lot of destruction going on, isn't it? And I don't know if you've seen some of the documentaries about the habitats of different animals just being totally wiped out. Those animals, of course, being becoming extinct. You see all of these things happening and think, boy, what's a terrible problem happening over in Brazil? But you know what Brazil is? Brazil is the, one of the world's foremost producers of beef. And the reason why the Amazon forest is getting depleted is because there's so many people eating meat on this earth that they are just destroying the forest to grow cattle. That's what they've done here in Australia. And that's what we've done here in Australia, if you look at what we've done to our natural habitat as well. Now, if I feel about the Amazon rainforest, I will also feel about eating meat. If I really put the linkages together. 
And if I'm really sincere about my love of the Amazon rainforest, I am going to be really sincere about making some personal changes in my life about that meat issue. Now again, we can do it on a divine love issue or a natural love, can't we? On the natural love, we can just stop eating meat. And that will bring us into harmony with that law and it will also help the Amazon rainforest. But if I still have a desire for meat in my heart due to some emotional condition, that's probably just going to be switched into something else or sometime in the future I'll eat meat again. What I need to do is feel the emotion inside of me that causes me to desire that and look at that sincerely. Now can you see how even just a simple thing like what we eat affects other people around the other side of the world? How many of you feel distressed about the amount of landfill uh, that happens like with regard to waste and rubbish? pretty bad, isn't it? And yet how many of us continue, including myself, continue to buy products that are packaged? And there's this big focus today, isn't there, on packaged products, you know? Even more, like Mary was saying, in Scotland, they wrap some of the veggies in plastic and then they're wrapped in plastic again in the package. And, you know, it's just like, it's overboard, isn't it? Like, just how much we go down the track. So if we were growing our own, would any of that occur? Probably not. But how many people of us have the lives where we can grow our own? Not many, is there? A few, perhaps. But often we're living in townhouses and high-rise buildings and, or we're living somewhere where there's no backyard, where we can, can't grow anything. Overseas sometimes what they do is they make a plot that they can go to and cultivate their own food. There was also something we were talking about in terms of being loving to all of creation and that was um, we were talking about the example of having a shower you have a shower for two minutes in the morning and you're hardly conscious and you stand under there or maybe you stand on there for ten minutes just trying to wake up and then you go off to work there's been no gratitude in the use of that resource at all if you have a shower for two minutes thinking and fearing about the water situation then that's not in harmony with love either and if you stand under your shower and you have gratitude and you enjoy and give thanks to this wonderful creation of God's, then, then you're the most in harmony with the Lord. Even if the shower is 20 minutes. <laughs> Can you see the difference? Two of them are based on fear and one of them is based on love, isn't it? Two of them are based on... So the ones that are based on love are going to create loving things. So can you see, I'm not saying that you won't enjoy abundance in your life. Because the truth is you will. But you just won't enjoy abundance that is uneconomical. In the sense of not renewable abundance. Non-renewable abundance is just a waste. Because it just destroys. You know, they did, I think, did anyone see that uh, documentary of a family in the USA? A husband and wife couple, they didn't have any children how much of the world's resources they were using. There was a documentary some time ago, uh, I forget what show it was on too, unfortunately. But they calculated that if every single person in the world lived the same as this couple who lived in the USA, in terms of using the world's resources, that we'd actually need five worlds to supply the resources. So is that sustainable? So is it loving? So look at what you're doing in terms of sustainability. Is it something that can be sustained? Is it something that can be reused over and over? Is it something, or is it something that you're just using, throwing away, and the world's resources are being wasted? And look at that. You're not going to be able to be perfect with it in the world we're living in, right? Because there are some essential food items, for example, that unfortunately <coughs> most of you will have trouble even getting unless it's packaged. But Try to do everything you possibly can in your life to actually reduce that and get into a state where we're actually being loving. Yeah, and I think that I've noticed a change in me because I've lived a, a long time trying and thinking about all of these principles and being very concerned and fearful and at times angry about what's happening in the world. And the change I've noticed in me more recently is that because I'm connecting with some of the grief about the dissolute, like, 
the feeling I have about the situation on our planet, the disillusionment with um, love and the, the hope for the future that I feel I've lost. I think a lot of, I'm less stressed out about making all of these decisions, conscious decisions, but I do feel I'm more drawn to uh, certain things or I, I'm less inclined to purchase things that are uh, out of harmony with love. Can you see what happens if, if you're in a fearful state? That that's creating more problems in different areas. So if you go down this road, oh, you know, it's out of harmony. We'd love to to get this particular thing, and oh, I can't do that. And you start really worrying and start stressing and start feeling like God's going to condemn me because of that. And that's a worse place than actually going ahead and doing it, right? But what we're saying is, that if you deal with these issues at the soul level, what will happen is the emotion inside of you desiring the disharmony. Thing, whatever that disharmonious thing is, will be released and you'll feel drawn and ironically because of your law of attraction, your law of attraction will bring more of those things to you automatically anyway. So your desire to live more harmoniously with creation around you will actually bring the more harmonious things to you without you having to even worry too much about the whole process. My whole diet has changed and we now live where we cook all of our own meals, whereas before I was living in the city and I was eating more packaged foods. Not, I was still vegetarian and all of those things, but um, just things have just changed as I have changed in my desires. Yes.